Why is it important for myeloma patients to know the cytogenetic abnormalities of their cancer? So myeloma is very different from a lot of what we call solid tumors, diseases like breast cancer or lung cancer. So in solid tumors like breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, they're staged from stage one to stage four. Typically, but not always, stage one solid tumors are simply removed either by surgery or radiation. Stage four, typically we give chemotherapy. And stage twos and threes are some combination of surgery or radiation or chemotherapy. Myeloma does not behave that way. In fact, myeloma has three different staging systems, but they all go one to three. In general, that is not the better way that we describe patients because we don't treat someone with stage one different from stage three. In our mind, we define myeloma as being standard risk or high risk. And in general, if you take a standard risk patient and a high risk patient, they tend to respond similarly to therapy, but the high risk patient will unfortunately relapse sooner. So part of our understanding of the disease and what's important to know is what type of cytogenetic abnormalities you have because that helps us understand what type of myeloma you have. Is it more high risk or more standard risk? When we speak about genetic abnormalities, they're not genetic abnormalities in the cells all over your body. They're just within the cancer cells themselves. And when we do those bone marrow tests, we specifically look for certain types of genetic abnormalities that we know make people higher risk or less high risk. One of the big ones we typically think about is something called a 17P deletion. We all have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and each chromosome has a long arm and a short arm. The short arm is P, and the long arm is Q. So when we say a 17P deletion, we mean some of the information on the short arm of the 17th chromosome is not there. And unfortunately, that's where something lives. It's called P53. It's this big tumor suppressor gene. And it's one of the mechanisms of our body to prevent cancer. And if you're missing that part on that chromosome, your myeloma tends to behave in a more high-risk nature. So it's important to know these things in terms of mapping out your long-term outcomes and different therapy options. And as our technology gets better, understanding which genetic abnormalities we have help drive specific therapies. As in the case with venetoclax, we know that people with an 1114 translocation have a higher chance of responding to that drug. So we often talk about different types of myeloma, and the reason we're interested in different types of myeloma is that we recognize that myeloma is different in different people, and we want to have better ideas of how to group the type of myeloma one individual has versus the type of myeloma another individual has. I'm a geneticist, so I look at the world through the lens of genetics. And part of the reason that I look at the world of myeloma through genetics is that I recognize that there are gen different genetic variations, different genetic abnormalities, different genetic mutations that might define one particular group of myelomas. So there may be a group of myelomas that have a deleted chromosome 13, or there may be a group of myelomas that have what's called a translocation, where two chromosomes get together like chromosome 14 and 12. So these all are genetic definitions, and we, be we become more aware that some of these genetic definitions now give us subgroupings of different types of myeloma, and some of these genetic variations that occur are associated with either more or less aggressive uh, myelomas. So in my mind, when I look at the genetics of myeloma, I'm looking at genetic tests and genetic results that distinguish low-risk, high-risk disease, for example, as genetic markers.